With this now, one team is going over the VCL core. One map in front of them, and it's just the frigid land of ice. But on the other end, it's Blink College looking to do it for everybody back home on the collegiate side. They're going to take this map and send us to Ascent. Can one more collegiate team also be part of the VC alongside Winthrop? Or will Core finally make it and make the dreams come true? Find out with me, Ravish and Ravish, and of course, Mr. Keg. Hello. I mean, look, we go from the hottest landscapes of Breeze over to the coldest depths of Icebox to figure out if this is the final map. I know I'm freezing too, man. But again, this has been a very important map when it came to Core. We've seen some dominant plays outside of both qualifiers with them in this. However, Icebox has been a safety map for Core. They've looked really dominant. They've played it super well, and they've gone relatively flawless through the qualifiers playing it. But... If there is a change, it's going to come out now from Blim. They have two very distinct agent styles that both teams bring out on this map. One team, the Swamp Cop. The other team, Default Daniel. And Core, they love their Default Daniel. Can it work, though? I would assume so. Considering, you know, Wallace? their their defaults have been uh, pretty goddamn good for what they're able to push, especially on high spots, right? You're, you're looking at double smokes, you're looking at the standard pushes, you know, slow three twos with the splits and the vipers and your jets. Like there's. I think too much out of the ordinary, but Icebox has remained one of the most dominant maps for a reason, right? In fact, the most competitive one was one we saw earlier today, where I think they took them to about eight rounds, in fact, on Lucky 7. So this is all that's left to remain. As you look at the stats here in the previous game as well, Keg, right? This is a, it looked, it was so close, right? Even the stats are right in front. Yeah, look how it's not a palindrome, but like 8, 8, 13, 13, that I've never seen that before. So I guess we'll have to go back to the Vaz and see, does that mean every single round a team got the opening pick they won? I mean, I guess it could be like a mismatch of rounds too, but my head cannons that every time someone gets the opening pick, that's how it ended up. You know what? Just to fulfill what your narrative is, I'll say yes. yes. But what nice. I do like though, I find kind of funny, is that there are only about one, two, three, only about four defuses in that entire round, which means, again, we are playing super puggy and these scores so exactly that. It's both Zeldris and Oki, you know, putting up fantastic numbers. 23 on Zeldris again. This guy's been on 20 plus every single day for the, all these series and the rest of his teams are no slouches. Yeah, we haven't seen a quiet performance from Zeldris pretty much at all in the entirety of the open qualifiers. But mm -hmm. I think the big takeaway for Breeze outside of just the two duelists just absolutely raging on, right, is definitely the fact that T-Dog's IGL abilities has just sharpened up so much over this past offseason mm -hmm. into now. I mean, a big reason why we had seen Core win out so many weird, big, rotating rounds has been because T-Dog goes for those calls. He's recognizing, okay, these are the placements. These are the defaults of the enemy team. This is how we can get around it all. And this was a big reason why we've seen Core win out Icebox so dominantly in the past. Those rotates that we saw in Breeze well, buckle up. Better get used to them because we're going to see a whole lot more on their attack. Exactly. Because on Icebox, mid round and call are going to be that much more crucial, right? Especially if the first sight hit does not work out, then we're looking at a lot more back and forth. And yeah. in general, like we're looking at a lot more flanks, like just, and I find what is going to definitely be a very bloody map. Uh, from both these sides because that's been the consistent uh if i trend especially on breeze and on icebox too yeah things just get look so close and come look we're both valor fans right we are dude. we like bloody maps we, I we would like say those so. yeah you know just you know gunfight 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 everyone likes those you know analytically sometimes there's not a lot of depth that's okay it's cool to see people shoot each other and get these wild kills remember okeanos getting that like not even like sub frame perfect headshot we live for that stuff too we do indeed and like that and those are the kind of things that we're talking about, right? When, when both these teams have the momentum behind them, then they perform extremely insane things. Yeah. Okay, especially, right? We saw both, you were saying, frame perfect headshots, but also alongside that, those knives where we pretty much almost got the ace as well, too. Looking at pixel frames that he was able to just cut someone into sashimi. And that is what I'm looking for and some more. But it also depends on we managed to see because we've all seen, we've also seen that. A jet summoner isn't the favorite on this map, right? I've seen raise a bunch here as well, too, because the nade helps a lot more with clearing out a lot of these close corners. So I'll wait to see what agent select is 
and then state my opinions. You know, while we wait for the agent select, I just realized something when you said Tsushima. What's that? Both of the maps that we're seeing for these vetoes, and this this is gonna be a wild one. Both of these maps, I think, are the only maps in the game surrounded by an ocean. Uh, is Icebox? I guess Icebox is kind of floating, yeah. right? So it, it, no, no, no. Uh, Ascent's floating. So uh, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Icebox is like a, there's a crashed ship. There's like humans out there there's penguins but there's like a big sea of ice ocean too right yeah 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 and the breeze is just an island and icebox is pretty much in the antarctic huh. and then and then a scent is floating so i guess you're right yeah there yeah. is there is water <laughs> I, I guess like the, the only reason why i could be wrong there is if lotus is surrounded by ocean i'm not sure you know what it doesn't matter we have agents like yeah. ready let's talk oh, perfect. about let's that see instead <laughs> Let's see, let's see it. Instead of the geographical and top end and topography of these maps, and we get a change up, but this is standard for Blinn as we as we get in harbor. Yeah, I mean look, you talk about the ocean maps, right? You want to bring the harbor out to get the maximum water the efficiency that you need. You don't want to have uh those weird hydroponics, hydroponics, hy hydraulics coming out any which way you go. Sure. But again, these are pretty much the common setups that we've seen from both these teams for the entirety of the run of Icebox coming back mm -hmm. into the pool. Nothing really too different, but I do really like Hopper on this map. I think there's a lot of cool things you can do either early round or end round. The big problem and a big offer that Core can capitalize on on their defensive side, though, is that Hopper at times struggles in the mid round to find value. The Cascades are good. The Cove is OK, and the high tide can be really hit or miss because you need it for either the end or the beginning of a round mm -hmm. so core they might be able to get away with a single controller comp at times that they strike at the perfect time against blin depending on how they play off harbor i imagine with blin is that their attacking rounds naturally are going to be where they're going to be where they're going to be a lot more favored and for defensive halves i imagine they'll be a lot safer and a lot more retake because that's where all those cascades and walls can really help you out right uh I also like that you can't say harbor without saying it as if you're from Boston. I mean, I was born next to Boston. Yeah, it's just it just comes out of you where, where you can't say harbor. You have to say harbor. harbor. <laughs> I, I've been I've been doing my best. I'm fighting the urge every single time I'm commentating. Harbor. There you go. It's like you're harboring feelings for someone, right? Oh, you're right. You know, what? I'm harboring feelings for harbor and for you. As you should, because we're both beautiful brown men. <laughs> Absolutely. But there we go. Early round comes by. Early defensive Viper wall comes out here. Oh. Now, I want to focus on this attacking wall, too. That's a great conditioning wall to sell this fake back over on B site. That's the benefit of having the double controller. You don't need to use the Viper wall every time. Ziv. Oh, mm. Ooh, that almost came through. Yeah, close on the shot. I believe he might have just legged him, if anything. But but that just just while their damage given over. And put the plant over by nest and we're gonna get 5v5 i feel like we're gonna see a lot of these <laughs> yeah this is definitely gonna be on like an end round special here paranoia not actually catching anybody here just yet cascade is wide enough for this was i'll just to get one okay down as they go around the side but they actually do smoke off of nest nice shot they gotta continue to push against them so they don't have a chance to respond but losing the fights towards the back the belt is in their control Spaz at 10 health. It's a 3v2. T Dog and Zip need to do something, but they're out in the open. Mikey gone. And Spaz now left. They're just going to spray him, pray, and run at him with just T. But Zip ready and waiting. Beautiful. And Zip held the entirety of that round, too. He had an interesting angle starting off on top of maps, making sure he found visibility without giving himself away necessarily. Like, yeah, you're in a 1v5, but if you're Killjoy, you don't really want to take that 1v5 fight either. So great timing, great rotations from Core. Blin, they at least found the spike to go down. They have a little bit more money going into this round. But really, the big question is, what can Blin do with the mid site with this harbor wall? And if you want to figure it out, do it on a round where you're on a thrifty. This is the perfect time to experiment. I mean, I enjoy experimenting, right? Testing oh. hypotheses and seeing oh. what new things we can do. Yeah, there's the wall. Let me push up right past the Europe to allow the space to walk in. And with nobody holding up back towards, but towards belt. So they're just able to push them, but they're not actually there. 
Let's push it up against the yellow. Nerve two gets caught, and that's a free sight. Now watch this rotation from Zeldris, though. That wall will fall, and he'll have a perfect angle with that outlaw to at least dome two. Instant shots, no armor, uh, no shields available for Ooh. anybody on Blim. But the, oh, cascade. the cascade's good. Yeah, that's enough. But he's pushes against it. Pushes out the outlaw, gets his one. That will define any more just yet, yeah, but as a second cascade does fall, as do the walls and all the cover that Blint has surrounding them. They're wide into the open, but they're still playing back towards green. You get the tap down though, but still gonna push against them. It's a fight galore, but good shot for Spaz the second with a beagle. And in fact, we're gonna find another, but you can't win up against the bulldog. Got two more left, sees the legs of one. One bullet, that's all he needs for Ziff. With Zelda's by its side, the dynamic duo holding pinkies. Take it one by one. Okay, core recognized now. Okay, Harbor, there's a Viper 2 in the post plant on a site like Bean. We have to push up aggressively. The longer a team like Core waits, whether it be mid or even back in Snowman, the longer the Harbor's even more effective. Because then, if you just bypass the Cascade like we saw Zell just do, it completely nullifies his utility. Perfect simple replay to show it off there. You are completely bypassing what the Cascade is designed to do. And Zell just is just going to disrespect all this utility on the defense. That's not going to stop. And so, Blin, they recognize now, okay, well, with our rifles, P-Sight did work decently. We have to spike down consistently, but we have <laughs> to fight for A-Sight here. If not, we can maybe go for a rotate. This is Zelda's interesting. to catch out those rotates. Yeah, because as I'll, I'll hold to see Spaz as she walks in this crosshair. Zelda especially peeks out, has the dash there, but as you see him. But T-Duck has gone up for the orb once every single time. Oh, nice shot. Uh, but, yeah, he's farming it. Yeah, but because of that, he's able to actually get out what was a smoke and also snake bite as well, too. So just early util given away and just for pretty much free, which is walk it up. I like that from him. Yeah, and this is scary, too, for Blim because they cannot waste any utility, especially with how little distance they've made on a site. Good, though, a big fake. High tide, good for that conditioning factor from both different sides and different controllers. It allows back yellow presence for Okeanos. Problem though, nerve, a sheriff. Never mind, Zelda just makes a surprise appearance. That's a Vandal also gone. Elki with a rare whiff, but gonna cost him a lot of his eco and a really nice gun as well. Bear in mind, because this is, this is the gun round from Blind, right? So, already going down one. I haven't looked for the plant just yet. Zelda just hunting and waiting, but we blocked left. off. Uh, nice. Oh. Yeah. See what's taken. This session, the plant goes down. And the core not able to get much more, though. And so now the rest of the core are going to find picks. If they can, just get some guns out of their hands. But seems Oki with the only unlucky one of the entire squad. Just snarly left here. And they're all behind closed doors, essentially, waiting to peek off one another. He sees him. Can he get him, though? Out of the time. Uh, Snarly should be looking for exits here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. monster from behind. So I'm going to put on my my mad scientist analytical helmet for a second. Sure. So if you're core right now, okay. you're looking at the agents that you've brought out. Blin are consistently looking for B side these last few rounds, and they've been able to get that spike plant down. They've been able to get past through utility, and they've been fighting for post plant decently well. But again, pistol bonus, not the full buys, right? So full buy, full arsenal, Ziff with the double nano swarms, double shock bolts from T Dog, the double slink bites from Nerve. You can just play post plant utility city to deny that default plant. And that's gonna force BC to play back on A site over and over and over. Yeah. And indeed, it's slowly going up over and over and over. <laughs> It's a good start as well, too. He's holding up both owl drones. They're gonna put up the reckoning for Snarly. Out of the upper angle, allowing Okeanos to move in. They're actually checking for him here either. Finds the first one, what's sexy the life. T-Dog, though, moves in the rest of the team, so he falls. Or the next as if comes in. It's a good trade, but look at the rest of the site. They have the walls up and more than enough space to get the plant down. So is in a tough spot with the off. The second, wow, good on nerve. And it just sprays through through Ziff as well. They stopped him before Viper could completely put out the expansion and core. That was a really good flood in to stop everything from going wary.
Yeah, great read too on the Reckoning. Reckoning too big, or I'm sorry, too small for a site like B to get consistent value, especially with how late rotations are. You see that come up from Monsi, it's gonna be an A side attack. And keep in mind too, Reckoning is a really good info gathering tool. That's what allowed Okeanos to take full backside control and nearly get that double spray. But had he gotten both, could have been a different round. Core though, like you mentioned, a great flood retake here. They don't need to change much going into these next few rounds. Plus, Ziff with the lockdown, they can cancel just about anything. It's a race to see if Teague will get that Hunter's Fury in time to cancel it out, but if Ziff can bring it out sooner rather than later, that's going to be another great flood and retake. I mean, he would have to play for the orb and get a pick, which isn't out of the ordinary, right? But yeah, it's a tough ask, but it's certainly doable. I think because because like here's just like how you were experimenting. I think what they do is that they put up the cascade uh, right past the wall, but. Again, actually, no, T-Dot takes it away from that. He's going to deny the Just opportunity. Just free every time. Yeah. Doesn't get punished for either time either. Cover going but out. Okay. Gets the okay, Gets pinged out, unfortunately. Oh, Mike. There's so many there. Once the smoke dissipates, Snarly could be in trouble. Yeah, I wonder if Martin, Snarly's going to back away before it dissipates. Oh, spotted by the Owl Joe, and he has to. Good shroud and step away. Backside control. Not aware about Mikey's presence. Top uh, pipes. Hmm. Okay. Key dog. Yeah, use the molly to force him out. He's so no low. Him. Okay. But not at all. But now, here should come in. It's a lot on using it pretty early to just force him out the site. Lynn College waiting around. Yeah, and they're the little side. It's not worth it. They already got the investment. And they'll oh, use that as a rotate. Dude, he's waiting. It's just it's a clear open angle for him. Oh, but the cove is huge. Oh, no. But now you don't have cove for the plan on default. It's fine, but you have Zeldris. At least allow him to get one. He wants to peek through. Through plates. Oki wins it. And uh, uh, the second as well. Two big picks for Okianos. Bringing the round back from what seemed like a really tough plant. Yeah. Yeah, 3 one Damn. I'm yeah. four. A genuinely surprised that uh, Blim had won that round. Not that they played it bad or anything. They waited out their time so effectively well that I thought for sure it would just be another one of the mill dash into A side, go for the plan, get denied. But I like that rotation. A great read to from Blin not to rotate into B side. The cove came down on mid, straight through, bypassing that line of sight. Well, in theory, of Zeldris, but at least he got traded out after Monsi had fallen. And look, it, it, Harbor used all of his utility. Like, he, he could fall. That was the least of their worries. Back to B again. Full save this time. Recognized by Blin. Overtaking the site. Yep. <gasps> so just stuck by. Ooh. Oh, he makes it out. He gets his one, but that's good enough. Out to recover a weapon, but at least he gets the info. If anything, Hartus Fury gets one tag as well. This is good for Blin. Impossible, but... Okianos wants to lower the chances, if anything. It's 4v3. Once again, just all... Deegs in hand, plant down, just some tip damage. They're not even looking at him as though he's just silently moving through the site. Ace? And Ace in an imminent keg. It's in front of him. He wants it. He's feeding for it. Oki wants to let it be known. Y'all getting jet diff on the server. But Snarly won't give it to him. Oh, come on, Snarly. If Snarly falls to Okeanos, every duelist we've seen in the last two series today will have aced. <laughs> Loki, maybe. Uh, but he doesn't have up so he's going to walk around the stairs like a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> What's another death? Oh, Dude, no Snarly. way, right? No. No, he doesn't have no. enough time. Oh. No, no, he doesn't have enough time. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, if he'd done it a fraction of a second earlier, he would have had it. But Spaz still means... there. He made Spaz sacrifice at least, but yeah. how is that going to affect the economy? It does a little bit, but nothing to really write home about. A no. good attempt from Snarly nonetheless. I respect him. Yeah, he was thinking that they all would have gone away at this point, so maybe he had maybe a couple seconds to play with. But otherwise, though, that's a save for core, right? So not much to expect out of there. And Oki just every single time popping off the knives. Right. And that was also on them too in the previous round, shutting down Zeldris with the op as well. And again, that was Oki too. So two rounds in a row, he's got some massive heroic plays to propel Blin into Ethan. I love this adjustment too. 
BC fighting B early on, but Zell just now playing on A side. He will find a lot more value be because he can rotate the snowman. Cascades down. Call's been made for the rotate. Mm -hmm. There is that lurk too from Spaz. Keep an eye on that. That could still be an A execute. There is still chilling over by Yell. Well, he's actually made it all the way towards back to the snowman, but. And there, every single person is well out of the reach of the lockdown except Zeldris. He's waiting for the push in, and that's good enough for him. He might be caught, and he is indeed detained. But meanwhile, T Dog comes in, takes two for himself, and again the T and T Dog stands for two every damn time. Now with this Monty Spaz, got a skedaddle. <laughs> two time T Dog. The two time indeed, <laughs> but. That's one more back. Zeldris to get the final. And starts it off, ends it off. Core looking back and forth. It's such a small adjustment that Core made into that round, but it made such a big impact. Zeldris, again, starting on A site, now can deny those early cascades, that pipes pressure we saw from Mikey. But let's say again, BC puts all that down on A, rotates back to B. Zeldris was being ignored so much in those later rounds on B site. He was holding down past yellow, couldn't find a line. He got some picks mid, but he was left out on an island to dry. Having him here now on God spot, maybe, would be gigantic for this Russian. And that's not Hunter Spheres. Almost, though. We're getting there. Close, close, right? But just a, just a bit away. Nah, unfortunately not. <laughs> Uh, but oh, the call's been made too early to rotate. Yeah, I was thinking Snarly might have wanted to play a bit more aggressive as he's way up there, but he might actually be caught if someone does peek him. But wall to cut off towards the back of the site and spawn. Okianos made his way in past the smoke. There's one up top, but one right down below. Zeldris caught first. Now it's not Snarly to make contact. Looking up better with the swing, but a good trade from Zeldris. Shut him down. Spike still committed towards the site, though. As Nerve now waiting for it. Wall falls on his fury. And Nerve finds one. He's walking this way while avoiding the lasers. But Mikey to take two in quick succession. Shutting down the raid take and allowing his team to plan. But Zeldris is still up there. He's walking at him menacingly and doesn't even shoot. It's fine. It's definitely 1v2. That's plan once again. Time is on his side. He just has to delay. Double shot holds. One more. One Ooh. The second? Wait! He's better! Sift a whiff! A clutch! Oh, oh, the pop and swing came out! No way, man! Oh, I need to see a replay on that. That is. Look. Obviously, I'm the greatest gamer alive, too, right? Mechanically, I try to go for those wide swings, ultra wide swings all the time. I cannot do it. So, Ziff, under this amount of pressure, able to do it, unbelievable. Such good news to see. Of course, don't sleep on Mikey either. He was the one that really divided out A site in the back end and got rid of all of the big players, but Ziff was there to still save the day. Reposition though, mid control from Glenn this time, a bit of a default that it looks like. Early Cascade is going to distract those defenders on B. Pressure's back on A side though, there are ults to work with. T-Dog doesn't fight for Orb this time, he is one away from that Hunter's Fury. Surely he must be looking to play for the pick in order to use it from far, far away. Yeah. And one thing changed as well, too, is we also see Snarly as well pushing up really, really far up, but knowing they're on the save, well, kind of more broken by here, right? They're, he's more than inclined to know they're probably going to push in as stacks really aggressively, so I mean, one form, which is simply not worth it. But speaking of T Dog, though, finds his, Okian also pinged out. But as is, he is going to go for the fight. Snarly right spike for the push down, and spike down. And Oki, ooh, look at the strafe. Well, just just like conditioned, respectful peak. It was went one by one, but taste some electricity. His Hydra bill goes up. Spaz instead, part of the trade for his homie. And a 2v3 by the end. They're just spraying it through. They managed to find the win. Wait, hold on. What just happened? <laughs> yeah, that was just a complete meltdown from there. Asai is just becoming a melting pot of action. It, it's it's a gunfight round, right? I mean, the Hunter's Fury, I thought, from T-Dog would be enough to help at least stuff out some of that timing away from Blin, but no, not even. But these round wins have been inconsistent from Blin, too, and that's why we see this timeout.
The idea here is just to take a deep breath, make these rounds less scrappy. They have the chance to tie it up against a thrifty round for core into the next. This is a time to figure out how can we win more consistently. And a big factor of that so far has been shutting out Zeldris. He's finding some impact on A-Site in the latter half, latter half of a round, but it hasn't been terribly great either. Blin just need to find that entry point on a side consistently without losing too many bodies yeah they have struggled a bit too because core is more than inclined to take you know early peaks and just play a first contact with people they're really comfortable with right such as people like t-dog and Zelda's naturally and with the all pressure that they've had in front of them so it's been tough to get around and kind of pick which sites they want to go into now, naturally leads to either just a really aggressive heavy push where they're just stacking up as three or four, or we're looking at just pickoffs happening to either on Oki or even T or Monsi, which really just is sucks. But so previous round though, hey, they they gotta ball? save. Look, the cascade's gonna come out immediately and everyone on core is gonna push it. No shot, right? Yo, you're actually a genius. <laughs> They all move past it. They're going on, on the save, like you were saying. So, no reason to not play aggressive except just looking to fight your way out. And what is happening? Teague is fighting for his he's, life. He's just running, bro. He's swimming through water, hoping nobody actually finds him. And Nerve again. He gets that. He actually takes the pig. A blender. A blender Dude. outside B. And remember, for this round for Core, they're they're sitting nice and dandy. Whatever they find this round will just be nothing but a benefit. If you can force Monsi to use Reckoning here, you've already won your Core. There's no shots, right? I mean, him jumping through two, two, two maybe. Dude, Spaz hears this. Surely he does, right? He turns around, comes back. Oh, he gets it. But mm, oh, Mikey comes around the back. If if Nerve gets that pick, then. Ran for like a 1v2, maybe 2v2, so it's highly possible, but they do enough economical damage. It's not exactly enough, though, as Oki still has the up. Whew. The blender's over, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Actually, as I say that, I'm looking at the ultimates and the ult cycling right now. Everyone in Blend is one off from getting theirs. That is going to be devastating. Monty has Reckoning. Fast A push off of the Reckoning. We're going to see a very big scrappy round yet again. Whoever gets kills on Blend, probably going to activate their ult immediately. Yeah. But we've got two rounds to go here. So Blin is probably going to want to use these ASAP just to secure the round however they can. <gasps> <laughs> Adios mio! <laughs> yeah, that was sick! The nah, no scope dude. on the. Uh, Proxy, I need, I need a replay. I need a replay no matter what after this round, please. And just slow it down 360 and loop it, deep fry it. I need to see that. <laughs> sick. I'm holding my breath right now. Again, keep an eye on those ults. The reckoning should be coming out any That's moment. Funny. It's designed for post plant. It's a big info gathering tool. Everyone's gonna be spotted on the core outside. Spike planted. But you got lockdown here as well too. There's a lockdown, yeah, and there's a reckoning as well in response. So it'll, it'll slow them down for a couple of seconds. Hundred three by T, not enough time. Doesn't actually use it. Gonna probably save it for, for next round essentially. Right but here. from from here though, they right continue here. to delay them further. They oh, manage to get into the site oh, and they're gonna use it for the plant instead. Yeah. That's a better idea. It's just slow down though. Oh. Sit. Mm, managed to find one more. Right? They're looking at it, but they know they need to force them off even further. As it's fighting things out, it's still a 2v2. They have no cover here at all. And past the lockdown, right? They have no time to do anything here. Oh, no. So there's one out of time, out of chances, and out of opportunities. A heavy investment round, but Blin clutches. Last round in uh -huh, the I see what you did there. Heavy opportunities because they'll just lost the op. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, I mean, look, a very expensive round, like you said, from Blin. Viper's Pit, though, was saved. I thought for sure if things became scrappy before the post plant, it would come out to cover the spike. I'm glad it didn't because, as you mentioned, again, there is one more round left. B side attack. Viper's Pit's going to come down for the post plant. Zeldris looking to hide in a corner. Use Nerve as that opening pick. Another Viper's Pit will come out to stop B main's push. No? Really? Because that would funnel the entirety of Blind to mid. Right here. Okay, it's a stalemate.
Once that cascade falls, then we might be able to see one of the two pits, I guess. Crossfire, though. Snarly and Zelda's. Ooh. Paranoia comes out late. Zelda has to back off, but he gets him in the air. Like shooting ducks. A big pick off and a necessary one for core to have a chance to maintain and possibly go even going into the next half. Yeah, remember, the idea for this round for Blin was to push in with Spaz, get the plant down, then Viper's Pit. Spaz is dead, not an opportunity anymore. Mikey's already created some space. Mm. As, this, as the opportunity walks into the stinger, this is Zeldus' hands here once again. He finds one towards the back, they hold it down, and it's just clean defense. One for each one of them, hand them out. Switching sides. Same exact score only we saw on map number one. But if you remember though, sides were swapped originally in the first half of Breeze. Core, they did okay on their attack. Their defense though was a completely different beast. They had a complete read of the pulse on Blin. They knew exactly what to expect 15, 20 seconds into a round. But Core's attack on Icebox is scary. Scary. And as good as we can see the Harbor and the Viper play out on their attacking side, mm -hmm. those walls and that controller utility is so telegraphed when you swap sites. That A site play is going to be what Core is looking for. Expend the controller util and push what the easiest play will be. Exactly that. Because look at the maps on its own, right? Their, their defensive rounds, especially just in this, within this qualifier, I think they have won 87% of, right? So... <laughs> It's, it's a little bit tough and a bit intimidating to try to come back from, but as we look at it, right, it's pistol though. Definitely could be game changing potentially, giving and either core, team the chance to move into their own advantage. And core hasn't been too consistent on their pistol rounds either, and that's just the core thing historically. Mm. It's one of the core values, you could say. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> snake, snake bite put out. Not even any chip damage done. The Batida though takes a lot of his health. Take gets taken away. Zeldris as well, fighting for his life, and finally Teague puts him out of his misery. They all push towards the back. Teague though, and he's just oh, sneak he in, find one. But is it for the flank? It's not enough. Like there's getting removed one by one. Core, well, nerve. Is that his best? But it's at half. Ziff has to move in. They didn't oh. refuse. Oh. Curse you, Cole. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Dude, All right. a Harbor's utility is so underrated. Like, I know mm -hmm. he might not be the best solo controller in the world, but, like, people got to recognize how reckoning can be a crazy all. Like, it doesn't last a long time. Great info gathering forces people to rotate. The Cove perfect situation where the cove can just come in so clutch exactly bullets you can't do much yeah and moments like that where you get a second of breathing room right that just it is more than enough move okay up top force off they also get the tag as well onto one mm. he's gonna be rain by yellow but not nah. this smoke though will force him back even further and now you're playing by neutral they're gonna, they might just swing into this, but it's a wide open angle. Yeah, this is really risky for both these defenders. Yeah, I don't no know. No escape about options. Mm, yeah. Kiro you know, just decides swing. They gotta just run in, but Nerve is dead. <laughs> Let's move into it. It's a force fire from Core as well. And what make this one count? Yeah, even with the weaponry here, forced by from core, the confidence is reigning supreme. Two inside kitchen, though, keep that in mind. Not a lot of info gathering, though, coming out from core side. There is no T Dog, no recon bolts to work with, no turret either. Still four strong, they cut them off with the walls and nerve along the side, waiting past yellow. He's so low, but it's got a delay at this point. Here's still a lot of time left. I started waiting for anybody to go in. Into the cold we go. The Stinger does it all by himself. Mikey? We're back to Stinger meta. Mikey again. He somehow always finds a way to sneak past enemy lines, but this time I'm not so lucky to survive. Dude, I'm telling you, don't sleep on Mikey. Mikey is going to be the future of Valor, I promise you. I've Damn. been watching him just grow over the last, like, six, seven months. I'm telling you, man, he's one to keep out for. But he needs to win rounds, too, so yes, unlucky does. there. Yeah. 7-7, seven, seven, though. 
This could be the last time now we see an even Thank half you. for the entirety of this series. Now, last time you said that, we were down to yes. like a 10-10, bro. <laughs> well, it was 3-3. Three, three. Thank you very much. Right. But, <laughs> but here, I mean, weapon advantage is now in Core's favor. They have a pretty good read about what to expect on B-Site. Yeah. A, not tapped yet. Against the Thrifty Round, perfect time to figure it out. I mean, I also wouldn't cock them out with just Deagles or either because the Deagle plays I've seen from their side is so nasty, but... That's two deagles gone. Teague and Monsi unfortunately caught out with so many members there. Look at the plants out here as well. And we'll get out. At this point, if you're just Blin, you're looking to farm for ults here. Mm -hmm. Objective not even really for the defuse, just take away guns. Nice shot. Oh, Mikey, get his clip to show up. It's Mikey and Mikey, man. Dude, we said it all before. Even with Deagles, we can't count them out, but he catches the timing on Oki. And that spells his own doom. As one makes his way towards the back of the side, is Eldris and Spaz sorry, and Ziff sandwiching them on the site. Yeah, really good spacing control from Zeldris there. And again, good information gathering from Core to see what a site could look like if it was a default on the Thrifty. Pretty good retake nonetheless, though. Removing some guns away. Like we said before, getting ult farming here, especially for Mikey, super important. Only a few orbs away from getting that lockdown super early on to this half. Teague's not too far away from that Hunter's Fury either. But Core, now that they've seen what B's about and where the harbor walls normally go, they're gonna press forwards and disrespect this util again. I don't mind this out of them because they were going for a very similar aura play that we saw T Dot was going for, right? Almost the entire oh. first half. Especially just Shots to get either hard to figure online. Mm, but up on top. Ooh, <laughs> drops down just barely. Take some chip damage, but I'll try to see if he can maybe get him with some utility up there. Not gonna find it. Oki, as he drops, he gets tagged. So he's gonna be forced off, especially with the paranoia. They're all flooding in now. Monty, last. First one in, last one out. But the Oki fighting two towards the back of the site. He goes to come in to, do, to defend the rest of them. They're not checking these corners. They're going down one by one. No one to get the trade here. Just cheat on left to lie, but one before. Gets one. Fantastic read again. Just a complete counter what T-Dog wanted to accomplish on A-Site that last round. The three-stack hold from BC, looking, knowing that A-Site hasn't been properly pushed into yet. Or wanted to see, again, what was going on on A-Site. And a great way to collapse it all past that Viper wall, really using all the resources and the environment around you to just shut down Core's attack. And it leaves Core in an interesting spot. Do we want to keep funneling B-Site? Is that too readable? This is where those gigantic rotates from T-Dog start to come out. They get shut down on one particular site. They start looking to fake. And it's up to BC to recognize that. They had to have watched a lot of footage already to recognize this. Mm -hmm. They have to employ it. Using the wall from the harbor himself to just cover him and allow himself to move across the site. It's interesting as he signals that maybe there's somebody close, but instead, but it's real slow and careful for trying to move in. I think the smokes. Okay, he puts someone one down mid. It's the fake. Trying to sell it, but no one there. Oh, that owl drone is going to make sure the fake smoke does not get sold. No one over rotates. No one yeah. cross mid. Still holding B with the op as well. Harbor and Sova now coming in. They push down the dart. They have a couple of seconds now to try to possibly get the plants on as the wall goes up. But they're going to wait around the side. Hunter's Fury, the first tag, the second. Zelda so barely gets out of there. As they delayed the plants, a lot of time remaining. Do they rotate it here? But no, they're still committing. No, they're all going to back away and play off of T-Dog's ultimate. Plus mm -hmm. six sets of mollies that prevent the spike to be approached. True. A lot of chances and a lot of time for them to be able to delay further and further. That's the knives not out as well. Nowhere to run. As like you're saying, there's a Hunter's Fury on their side. T-Dog. It's off the tap, pushes that out. Okiyar's pushing against them too. A lot of that's being done. Zealous comes around through mid. Still three on site. Zealous look slow to push in. Gonna come up top towards the back. Oki okay, caught. No. Tucks into the cold. It's probably not working. And the snake bite, like you're saying, the molly after molly. Pushing the back further. Zeldris may have caught the men off, although he dies by the end. 
Our core do a good enough job of delaying. This is a tough call now for Blin. Do you go for a timeout to reconvene and figure out? Okay, now we understand that this is just gonna be post plant util city no matter where core goes. Because reattaching the site, re pushing back in when that spike goes down is gonna be the hardest thing in the world. Blin have to play for stall, they have no choice. And we mentioned that Core wants to start going for the fakes. We saw that with Snarly Smoke. Luckily, though, Teague was there with the Owl Drone to make sure, hey, no cool. one's crossing mid. Don't go anywhere. This is not a B hit. That can't be a yeah, consistent factor for either one of these teams. There they are. Favor stall. Mm. Opening pick not going to work. Yeah, it's just it's one caught as long as I the second one pinged as well. I certainly know how how hot A has been. I think a rotate might be imminent here. Oh, T Dog is mid with recon. No. They're going through lane instead. And it's just as watching. He's behind yellow. And the dart should ping him out. Yeah, shoots him. There we go. And Zelda is running after him, but Nerve is the one to catch him. The Viper V Viper duel works out. The bike to delay it, but the plant will still go down. Really a big fear of Oki right now. That recall was meant to drive him away. And there it is. The devil himself has emerged. Fine. Spotted. Unlucky. A fight from two fronts. One smoke available for Oki on us. The obstacle remaining. Almost all the knives are just one. He needs a perfect dome shot, but not going to happen either. They're going for the fight. The T-Dog holding off by flank. It's still three still remain alive. Yeah, save definitely is what they want to do, especially with the op as well. And Loki decides to do so. Eco plays. Of course, they'll get the round. Now two up, op in their hands. Blin call his next round is going to be crucial. Yeah, timeout needs to be made here. Three rounds away from Quora to qualify for challengers, mind you. Which is a, a wild statement to say that we've already approached this point. Oh! 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 oh. That would have taken years off of my life. Thanks. <laughs> Jump scare. A little bit. Like, and we say often, Valorant is a horror game. Valorant, not yeah. child game. <laughs> Valorant's scary. Boo, hee hee ha ha. Bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm done with that. But I throw away, you know. <laughs> no way. No timeout again, though. This, this is no. getting riskier. You have one at your disposal, but again, if, if you go maybe 11-8, 11 9 that's still you don't have a lot of room to maneuver for the post plan or i'm sorry even for like to adjust mm -hmm. monty has that retake tool that's the reckoning this boss is close to getting that viper's pick it won't be available this round unless heroics happen mikey on the other hand one kill needed lockdown could emerge same thing for zip as well or with Viper is also available as a potential option alongside Reckon, like you're mentioning. So, tools in their hands. Oh, whiffs! Huge. Big pick from T-Dog. A T to get the trade is nice, but it's just a trade. The op being gone, so much pressure being lost on the site. You should they run. They got to find more. So, 4v3, and there we go. As we're talking about, that Ziff investing right away, clearing out the site. As all to rotate over. Spaz is still there. He wants to fight them, but up top finds Nerf. Good trade. That's enough, he's done his job. Monty needs to bring out Reckoning nice. here. Even if it's a 1v3. Not worth it. No? One? He might. 1v2? It's possible. As the code, but he gets pinged. Saving the code for the potential post plants. We have them to come around, but they're on the outside. They're covered by the wall. They're just going to wait for the tap on the spike. They're Not playing it smart. Hole. He's faking it. He's gonna One push up. Enemy remaining. Oh, they're waiting for it. It was nice. It was incredible. And it was genius. Monsty with the fake. He thought he was on the inside, but he was the outside man the entire time. What a fake. People are it? sleeping on Harbor, living. dude. We saw the same thing with Spaz. What in the previous series? Bring down a fake smoke. Rotate around it. Divide out the 1v1s. Teams are still not expecting that when the stakes are so high. Huge work from Monty, not even needing his ultimate. Can be carried over into this next this round. No timeouts needed. The confidence is still high. And for core, A side's been 50 50. B side's been much more much more consistent. And we said it operator. too. What's up? Uh and I was saying, I was saying that's I was saying, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I'm wondering now.
Oh, Quartz? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not what I was expecting here, but it's still a good timeout nonetheless. Core love to go for these round 10, round 11 timeouts, regardless of what the stakes are, what tournament they're in, just to figure out. Well, it's mostly just T Dog being like, okay, this is how we close it out. And I'm going to sound like a core enjoyer. I don't think I've ever seen them lose post timeouts before. We, like, I believe, this is usually it. I mean, I would say I personally have, but yeah, uh, I believe it was, it was in fact within the first series of the day, but they didn't unfortunately lose. I believe it was two rounds out of the timeout, but they still won the map though, so it doesn't necessarily matter that they lost. But, right? but is it like a round ten timeout where it's like okay, or was it like a round three? Like I guess not round three, like a round five timeout. You know, mm -hmm. it's you know what? That's that's fair. It's. It's tough, but yeah. uh, I'll wait to see what they look to animate on this. Because remember we said yes. that was a crucial round for Blin, and off the back of Monty with an incredible clutch again, he starts it off. Again, taking away Snarly, not having your remote smokes is going to be a bit tougher, but that'll force it to rotate. I mean, all the while, as long as Core plays slow, these ultimates once again will get farmed up by the supporting cast. Mikey already has it. Spaz and Monsi do too. Any post plant scenario, you can bring all the mollies and shock bolts in the world. Those ults enough will create enough space to make things very difficult for Core in the post plant. And look how far away everyone on BC are playing. They want to use those ults now. One nano swarm on default. That's the only defense on this site. Nerve is also hoping to set up, perhaps for. No, I was thinking he might have actually committed the the pit, but instead play on the outside. But Blin College, a lot of tools available, and that's the first one. Lockdown there is deep enough too, where they have to pretty much clear out the entire site. But Nerve can just play lineups, right? And along with the reckoning here too, so now they're actually pinned out where Nerve is. Both not taking the spike is at half, and now they've got to play careful. They're so on the outside. Ziff as well too has one Molly remaining, but they just removed them from play. They did, but at what cost though? I'm not gonna take away from the success that BC had found that last round. It was great, but now all you have left is the Viper's Pit. You need to use that as your retake tool, or you can mm -hmm. use it to shut down one of the lanes. Core is a great rotate team though. Blin, if they can continue to just flood retake, they have a great chance. But again, two critical ultimates were used that last round that won't be making an appearance again. Now, Core, they can settle back into their more preferred side of B. A single hold from Monsi, who, granted, has had a great stronghold on this choke. But he's all alone, without the help of Oki, at least just yet. Once again, plays for playing first contact. Now, they don't actually know that he's there, though, with the Cascade. It'll, it'll slow him down, if anything. Yeah. For the rest of the squad, they're also playing very far back if you see your max, right? They're, they're playing up by Snowman, one Ness. So they have. So they're playing their exit lanes, if anything. Yeah, Oki's really using this wall to just get. Thirty-six seconds left. It was looking like already just the reconvene, but no, a side again. I mean, to be fair, I see the read. Left. Three people left alive. The only ones with that post plant util. That is the bread and butter. You have the viper's pit available, holding for the flank. Nerves gonna not gonna be able to bring it out. No, this is the save. I got I got baited. No, it's they have to, and now for core. Ten seconds left. The sides and momentum have flipped. Yeah. Crucial round in the next. That's in front of them. And if you look at the eco, look, Zeldris is broke. He's doing a me cosplay. Snarly. <laughs> that, not Stay that much better, bro. It's a part-time job. Like but it's it's not looking up right now. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have Bladestorm available either, so the light by Vandal is is a pretty risky buy, but honestly, I'm for it. Again. 
Ultimates are a big thing on Icebox, so no real commitment into that last round. T Dog one away from the Hunter's Fury. Mm -hmm. Could maybe try to farm for that B ult. But let's assume Ult will not be part of the equation this round. Oki still remains with the Vandal. Oh, not Vandal, sorry, with the Operator. Mm -hmm. Was good for that opening pick before. This time playing mid, expecting a mid push. Not the case. And this time it's T instead to take it. No one pushed the belt early enough, so I'll remain in this pocket. I'm gonna use the Yellow Drone to scope out to push in just yet and see no one move past Orb either. But just one spot and no one tagged, but the entire team's there. Except we yeah. see Nerve. Awesome. What's it again? He was on that Lurk. Didn't capitalize on it though. Turret was broken. Now he has to watch for the mid Lurk for the flank instead. Just trying to sell the fake of FS though. There is someone lurking by mid with the smoke as well too, but the smoke all the way on the outside. They're waiting. All the blimp playing super patient. Catch one. There's the dart. Info not given, but they want to get the plants out and not get out of there. Spaz not gone though. As Viper's pit there. Gone from one and activated the other. Ziff as well. Paranoia was big, but they couldn't find him off of it. So he managed to stay alive. And now Core have to do exactly that. Stay inside the pit, delay, and they cannot get the defuse. But Charlie now gone. Ziff has the opportunity. He's going on top, but doesn't find the second. It could have been big, but it's not enough. They're playing around and inside of the spike as well. Oh, caught. Hit down. That's big. The second also taken Ziff. As soon as it's taken away. Blin calls are running circles around core. Ooh, what a turnaround from Blin! They're the ones who have yet to lose post timeout. And now That's 10 good. to 12. We could very well go to map 3, the decider of all things ascent. Okeanos, the big counter for him and that operator would have been that pit. He picked up the phantom. Wasn't enough for core to take him out though. Now things are not looking good for Core. It's dire straits. Not as many rotates as I would have expected for the attack that we've seen before. Mid also yet to be played. This time though, Blin goes for the timeout. And again, it's the same exact idea for the timeout here for, for Core. How do you shut this down? I don't know. This is this is tough for the user second as well. They've gotta find some way to bring things back. Like they, they're on light shields, right? They have Hunter's Fury, but nothing else really available, but and a pit and a Fury on their side as well too, Fatigue and Spaz. The eco on Blin as well too is incredible. And yeah. I find this momentum can really, everything they've gotten is, is, is right off the back of Monty's clutch. Yeah. Getting that too, faking with the Cove. Like this just, it turned around the entire map for them. And we could be seeing Ascent and we know Ascent's gonna be very competitive as well. Yeah, I mean, look, it's going to be Duel of the City again with Zeldris and Okeanos. And yeah. you're completely right. The arsenal for Blin has snuck up on us. The Viper's Pit, the Hunter's Fury, Okeanos with that Operator. Three specific ways to shut down the map all at once. Core, they've already struggled to find spacing to get onto a site. And it's been 50-50 whether or not that post-plant utility barrage that we talked about even works. It's falling apart for Core, but this is their last chance to patch it up before we go to map three. It's possible. Maybe something. Watch the York. No. IGL's gone. That is tough. That's a spike as well there oh, too. Oh no. Dude, this is this is such a Okay. I was about to say that could have been so detrimental, but remember, obstacle there. The second he's walking into the sidelines! Ziff stuck by. Bro, he's still in the park. It's still 3v5. They got to fight against us. We're, we're going to send, bro. It's it's just happening. <laughs> yeah. You and I are going to be wiping here until 2 a.m., Max. Let's get hey, you ready to what? get into it. Honestly, Ravish, I'm down to go until 2 a.m. This has been a banger series so far, and I got to say, Blin, they made one heck of a recovery there. Again, Core, a dominant map for Icebox, shut down by Blin. They had done their homework. They've looked at the VODs. They know exactly how T-Dog likes to operate, especially on that attacking side. And again, looking from Breeze to Icebox, a completely different Blin. Indeed. And with that... One map remaining, one team to go into challengers. 
Only one squad can do it. We'll find that out after the small break in the final map of a set. Y'all stick around.